So, has Rambo forgiven me for getting another cat? Well, he hasn't killed me in my sleep yet. Server room, this is the captain. Rhett, is there something going on down there I need to know about? Ah! We're on UPS backup, sir! The main paradigm couplers have come on a line. Uh, the tachyon router is uh, tangled with the secondary gazon. In router. English, Mr. Rhett? It's the bandwidth, sir! Getting it down is not the problem, it's getting it back up. Well, do what you can, but remember, I've got a budget here. I'm gonna have to call you back. Hosting your own servers also means you get to host all your own problems. Even the most skilled chief engineers will tell you you should decentralize your network. So why not host your services with Linode? If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. They offer shared CPU plans for as little as $5 per month and can scale as high as you need to go with dedicated CPUs, S3 compatible object storage, GPU hosting, NVMe block storage, and more. Linode is also expanding at light speed, with 12 new global data centers planned before the end of 2023. Visit linode.com slash craft computing and get a $100 60-day credit just for signing up for a new account. That's linode.com slash craft computing, and again, thanks to Linode for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. On the desk in front of me is a giant orange Siberian cat, but aside from that is the EpoMaker RT100, a RetroVibe RGB keyboard with hot swappable mechanical switches, a tactile media control knob, and a 1.33 inch smart display. Aside from the modern goodies, its color scheme is largely reminiscent of the IBM Model M keyboard, but many of the keys are labeled with unique glyphs and symbols, giving it somewhat of a retro futuristic vibe. The keyboard itself is quite standard with a 97 key layout. Connectivity is really up to you as it can be paired with all of your devices via a USB-C cable, 2.4 GHz wireless via the included dongle, or via Bluetooth 5.0. All three modes work well enough with little to no fuss, and even switching between Bluetooth devices on the fly presented no issues. Now I know I said this keyboard was RGB, but for some reason I didn't really anticipate it including that. EvoMaker reached out with wanting to know if I could review this keyboard, and the 90s vibe and mini screen had me wanting to follow the white rabbit, so the RGB was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. Even without any transparency in the keycaps, the lighting stands out quite nicely. The lights are all south facing on this keyboard, meaning they are oriented to point at you from underneath the keycaps. The RT100 ships with several different lighting presets to choose from, all of them pretty standard fare for RGB keyboards these days, such as a static color, monochromatic fading, responsive light ripples, and the like. EpoMaker also has software for customizing your own lighting effects as well, and the software works on both Windows and Mac OS. Combine the RGB lighting with the bland Model M aesthetic and the cyberpunk display, and this keyboard really shines. Pun intended. Anyone who has watched my keyboard reviews or build videos in the past knows that I'm a sucker for firm, tactile switches. And while they do offer those, Rhett was the one who responded to this email and ordered sea salt silent switches. That's right, no clickety-clackety dopamine drip to comfort you through long gaming sessions. No, these are silent, just like any future references Rhett can expect from his future job hunt. Sorry you had to find out this way. <laughs> Direct from EpoMaker, you can purchase the keyboard with Gateron Pro Yellow 2.0 switches, or a set of switches EpoMaker designed themselves in-house. There are the aforementioned Sea Salt Silent switches, EpoMaker's Flamingo or Budrigar switches. The RT100 also includes support for hot swappable switches, for when you want to replace everything with a set of Kale Box Blues. Now, I'm not one to field every single review request for every keyboard, motherboard, or graphics card that comes my way. I'm always more interested in unique products and designs, and a mini smart display on the side of a keyboard definitely fits that ticket perfectly. That being said, we have had a poor track record for keyboards with screens on this channel. Some attempts are more clumsy than others, you could say. Now, I didn't think the smart screen was going to revolutionize my workflow or anything like that, but having a fun widget to look down at and see CPU temps, weather, or even just the date and time seemed like a fun little addition to my desk. 
The screen itself is a 1.33 inch display, and while EpiMaker doesn't state any official resolution, it is more than dense enough to not make out individual pixels. It attaches to the keyboard via a USB-C plug and a couple of slotted clamps, but installing it was an exercise in patience. The written instruction, the website documentation, and even the product page all say the plug is quite deep, ensure the mini screen is completely inserted before attempting to use. Which should have been a clue, getting the screen to work isn't as intuitive as you would like it to be. I tried to seat and then reseat the screen a dozen times or so, and while it did seem the screen was turning on with the backlight glowing ever so slightly in the dark, EvoMaker's driver software refused to send any images to the display, only telling me to ensure that the screen is plugged in and try again. It certainly seemed like it was plugged in, and it's not like I've never connected a USB-C cable before in the studio. But no matter what I did, it didn't seem to work. So finally, out of pure exasperation, I gave it a solid and forceful thwack. And sure enough, it clicked into place and turned on. Sure, they tell you the plug is quite deep, but wow, that's your mom on a whole nother level. If you pick up the EpoMaker RT100, make sure the screen is fully seated, and then do it again just like your mom. <laughs> I'm also not sold on the longevity of this screen, as most of the display just kind of hangs off the back of the keyboard. I feel like a solid hit from an errant hand or a running cat could easily turn this back into a normal keyboard. It'd be nice to see a little bit more support added underneath the display to prevent any accidental geometry reconfigurations. With the screen up and running, let's take a look at their driver software. EpoMaker makes it easy to upload pictures, show the date and time, and monitor your CPU performance. While I was able to get the CPU usage to display properly from Hardware Info, I could never get the temperature to read out. There doesn't seem to be an option to select which sensor to pull data from either in EpoMaker software or in Hardware Info directly. I'm hoping that this is an option that will be added to their software in a future release though. I've been driving the RT100 for the last couple weeks, and have actually grown to appreciate the silent linear switches, even though I desperately miss my clickety-clacks. As a fairly heavy-handed typist, I did run into one issue when typing though, and that was a propensity for entering double spaces on the keyboard. The action on the spacebar itself is smooth and very well balanced, but the rebound at the top of the stroke is sometimes enough to trigger a second key press. Writing up the script, I had to delete around 50 or more instances of mistaken double taps. If you have a lighter touch than me, or install some stiffer switches, this may not be an issue, but it is something I ran into when reviewing this keyboard. Another feature that I really like on the RT100 is the media control knob. A knob or a wheel for volume control are always my preferred methods over keyboard hotkeys, and with the RT100, it's easy enough to reach up and know exactly how much you're turning it thanks to the sharp tactile feedback. It's not revolutionary by any means, but I always appreciate more intuitive controls being integrated into keyboards and mice. The Bluetooth and wireless connectivity also made this keyboard simple to move around to a lot of different devices around the studio and between different projects. I will say the screen doesn't exactly make it the friendliest keyboard to toss in a bag and move around if that's something that you do a lot, but you can always unplug the screen when you don't need it, assuming you can ever get the screen back on. Like I mentioned, I did daily drive this keyboard around my office for both writing and playing games over the last couple weeks, and other than the space bar, I really don't have any complaints. I used the keyboard to write up this entire script and enjoyed the use of it while playing games the entire time. Again, being a bit heavy-handed, the keys were a bit too light for my liking, but the actuation distance seemed to be consistent throughout the entire keyboard, so I will chalk that up as a net positive. It also didn't take much adjustment from my daily driven Gateron greens to get comfortable with these ultralight linear switches either. Since using a keyboard is such a subjective experience, it's hard to measure one keyboard against another. While some things can be accurately measured at the factory or in a testing environment like this, there's really no way the average person can truly tell a difference, and I wanted to offer some form of objectivity to this review. So I pitted Rhett against the EpoMaker RT100 and my custom aluminum juggernaut with the Gateron green switches in a few rounds of Z-Type, a web-based typing game where you type words to destroy waves of enemies. The script for this video comprised the words in the game used to send each wave of enemies at him, so it will come down to purely the keyboard layout and switches, and a pure objective user input of Rhett. So as you can see, there is a little bit of a comparable difference. The silent linear switches scored around 60 points higher with an accuracy of a little over 2% better. 
Then again, Rhett also does daily drive cherry reds in his Patriot keyboard when he's not here at the studio. So, overall, I really do like the Epo Maker RT100. The 1.3 inch display gives some PC vitals at a glance, while adding another level of customization to a keyboard. It's well constructed, offers a solid lineup of switches direct from Epo Maker, and is hot swappable, making installing your own preferred switches a breeze. The Epo Maker RT100 is available for pre-order now at epomaker.com, and comes equipped with varying switches for between 106 and 120 US dollars. A price that puts this above most entry-level mechanical keyboards on Amazon, but solidly cheaper than some of the bigger names like Corsair and Razer. If you are interested in picking up the Epo Maker RT100, I will have links for you to follow down in the video description. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Mastodon at Craft Computing at hostx.social to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel, consider joining me on Patreon, as as little as $1 a month helps me continue to create content like this and gives you exclusive access to my Discord server, where you can talk with myself and all the other hosts from our weekly live show, Talking Heads. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, everyone. And hey, we did an entire video with the cat on the desk. Don't worry, he'll get lots of scratches. Beer for today is not a beer at all. It's coffee, but in this uh, fancy Tech Tech potato mug. Cheers, Ian. He's alive because his tail is twitching. Ramble. Ramble. Hey, at least sit up and show yourself. Hey. Hey. Rambos. There we go. How's that? There's no beer review today. It's just going to be two minutes of this. You all thought we were joking, didn't you? Yeah. No, get those booty scratches. There you go.